So chapter 23, Restrictive Pulmonary Disorders. So in this chapter, we'll talk about just the occupational lung disease as well as obesity and its impact on a respiratory system. So restrictive pulmonary disorders are a category of respiratory diseases that's characterized by a loss of lung compliance. So lung compliance is the ability to expand. So how easily can you stretch out your lungs? If you have decreased lung compliance, that means it's more difficult to expand your lungs. Essentially, your lungs are very stiff, and so you have an inability to inspire. Um, causes include alterations in the lung parenchyma, like your alveoli, bronchioles, um, issues with the pleura, the chest wall, or even neuromuscular function. So because your lungs can expand, um, your lung volumes and capacities are going to be reduced. So you'll see a decrease in vital capacity, total lung capacity, functional residual capacity, and residual volume. So if you recall, your vital capacity is the amount of air you are physically capable of moving. So if I gave you a balloon and I said you have one try, one breath to fill that balloon up with as much air as possible, you would probably take a deep breath in, as deep as you possibly could, and then you would breathe all of the air out into the balloon until no more air can come out. So the amount of air that's in that balloon now is your vital capacity. That is what you are physically capable of moving. So all of these capacities will be reduced because your lungs won't be able to stretch out and fill with as much air as you possibly could. Now the greater the decrease in lung volume, it's associated with the, uh, the severity of the disease. So the more severe uh, restrictive pulmonary disorder you have, your lung volume will be reduced even more. You'll also see a decrease in the partial pressure of um, oxygen in the circulation, um, and, but your CO2 can actually be normal or reduced, and you tend to see an increase in your pH, so alkalosis. So we'll talk about two um, disorders related to restrictive lung disease. The first one is occupational lung disease, and this is a lung parenchyma disorder. So occupational lung disease has to do with your occupation. So the etiology results from inhalation of toxic gases or foreign particles, typically that you're exposed to based on your job, um, as well, well as atmospheric pollutants. They also have a role. So probably where you live also plays a role. So there are different types. We have pneumoconiosis. This is caused by inhalation of inorganic dust particles. And for this one, really the greater the exposure, the worse the consequence. So you're really not going to see the effects of this until you've been exposed to it for many, many, many years. We have anthracosis. This is known as coal miner's lung or black lung. So obviously people who worked in um, coal mines had this. Uh, silicosis, this is due to inhalation of silica. And then asbestosis, this is inhal inhalation of asbestos. So the pathogenesis. So what the pollutants do when you inhale these chemicals is it interferes and paralyzes the cilia. And so remember, the cilia in our lungs helps, re, helps us remove um, mucus. And the job of the mucus in our airways is to uh, trap dust and foreign particles from actually getting deeper into our alveoli. So if the cilia is paralyzed, we're going to have impaired clearance of the mucus. And that mucus is going to have all of the dust and foreign particles that we inhaled. And that's not supposed to be there. So what's going to happen is our immune system is going to mobilize. So macrophages will try to engulf these particles, um, try to remove them. And one of the ways they do that is to release lysosomal enzymes. And these secretions actually will damage our alveolar wall. So clinical manifestations, well, symptoms depend on the predisposing factor. So in pneumoconiosis, this is the um, exposure to inorganic dust, Again, we don't see signs and symptoms in the early stages. It's really going to occur maybe 10, 20 years um, after chronic exposure. So this is the example where people who might have been working in uh, the coal mines, they had no issues until maybe um, 10, 20 years or even after they retired. Um, progressive productive cough. Uh, we'll also see dyspnea, shortness of breath, especially with exercise. And then the late clinical features include chronic hypoxemia, a core pulmonal and respiratory failure. So how do we treat it? So preventative measures are key to try to limit onset as well as severity. So you really want to make sure that um, your workforce is adhering to federal standards for dust and particulate matter and to continue to educate both the workers and employers to adhere to the standards. Um, try to prevent further exposure. Corticosteroids can try to suppress the immune system. 
And then uh, bronchodilators may be useful as well as low dose oxygen therapy. Um, you can also use machines to help you breathe. So intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Uh, you can try to drain the mucus using postural drainage. So this is changing your position to try to aid mucus um, from coming out of your respiratory tract and deep breathing exercises. So restricted pulmonary disorders. Um, question is pneumoconiosis, uh, disease of the lungs is, which of the following is most likely? Is, does it produce severe symptoms starting in the early stage, um, are effectively treated with antibiotics, produce antibodies to the causative agent or antigen, or does it damage alveolar walls from macrophage action? And the best answer is it damages alveolar wall because of macrophages being mobilized to the area. Okay, so the next issue we wanna talk about is related to chest wall deformities, and that would be disorders of obesity. So the etiology is obesity, so excessive body fat. So those with a BMI of 30 uh, kilograms per meter squared have a increased mortality of 50 to 100% compared to those with BMIs of 20 to 25. Now BMI isn't perfect, it's based on your body weight and height, but it is an easy way to kind of look at whether or not um, we might be um, in a, uh, have a BMI that might increase the risk of certain illnesses and diseases. Um, what causes it? Well, ex excessive caloric intake and or reduced caloric expenditure. So more calories in than calories out. Women tend to have a higher risk of obesity than men, blacks versus whites, and lower versus higher socioeconomic groups. So the pathogenesis may be associated with hypoventilation and airway obstruction. So <clears throat> essentially what that means is we're getting less air moving in and out of our lungs, um, possibly due to an obstruction in our airways, um, as well as something called Pickwickian syndrome. So Pickwickian syndrome is when there are increased abdominal size. So with obesity, we have greater um, abdominal weight, essentially, and that can force the thoracic contents up into our chest cavity. And so our lungs are supposed to be able to expand. And one of the main ways is that our diaphragm will flatten. And um, if our abdominal contents are forced, are kind of pushing its way up into our lungs, our diaphragm can't shorten, it can't contract, it can't flatten, and so our ability for our lungs to expand reduces. And we, if we can't expand our lungs, then we can't reduce pressure in our lungs, and as a result, we're not gonna bring in air into our lungs, or as much air. Um, sleep apnea syndrome is also associated with obesity and um, issues with breathing. So we know that soft tissue can get deposited in our neck, and it predisposes the person to having airway obstruction. Um, especially when they're sleeping. So clinical manifestations include decreased alveolar ventilation. And so if you have less air going in and out of our alveoli, it's gonna lead to severe hypoxemia, so low oxygen in our blood. Um, we can also have sleepiness, especially during the day, and that's really associated with the sleep apnea. We'll have shortness of breath. Polycythemia, again, that's gonna be associated with the hypoxemia, and so our body will um, try to respond to that by increasing red blood cell production. We'll see corpulmonal, again, that's the hypoxemia, leading to uh, vasoconstriction of our blood vessels that feed our alveoli, increasing blood pressure in the pulmonary circuit, and so our right ventricle has to um, um, remodel. So essentially, we'll see right-sided hypertrophy. Um, impotence has also been associated with this, as well as headaches and aneurysis, which is involuntary urination. How do we treat it? So low dose oxygen therapy. So every time you see oxygen therapy, always keep in mind it's low dose oxygen therapy. Um, caloric intake that produces an energy deficit of between 500 to 1,000 kilocalories per day. And so that would be um, able, that would be something that is better or easier to sustain, and so it can promote uh, weight loss over time. Um, exercise, aerobic exercise, and then if necessary, gastric bypass or a stapling. And that is it for this chapter.